myth. I can party with people as long as they don't have symptoms. That myth is false. As we've seen, up to 40% of people who have COVID-19 are asymptomatic and can pass it on to others. So I'd recommend avoiding any social parties, especially indoor ones. If you want to try to socialize but reduce your risk, I'd recommend meeting outside in small groups, continuing to wear a mask, and socially distancing from others if you can. Then together, we can keep COVID-19 out of school. For ways to keep your community safe, go to backtoschooltogether.com. I feel like, like her heartbeat is like same speed as mine. And I think we have this like deep connection, this heart connection in her heart that there's, there's room for me and mom. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. It's a sensory thing. It's a thing with Asperger's. She's really good with Anya. I've seen adults react to my daughter when she has meltdowns, like she's from a different planet. And this little animal just sat next to my child and was just like, you know, it's gonna be cool. She's my superhero. Good job, kitty cat. When we adopted Lucky, we discovered all the wonderful things that make her unique. Lucky's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly she's pure love. Hello, I am Paul J. Salvino, and I am humbled to serve as the superintendent of the Maslin City Schools. On Tuesday, November 3rd, the Maslin City Schools will have a levy renewal on the ballot. This no new taxes renewal will be issue 32. Issue 32 was originally passed in 1996, and the dedicated residents of the Maslin City Schools have been extremely supportive every five years during elections since then. Issue 32 is a five-year renewal that equals no new taxes. Issue 32 will generate $2 million per year for our schools. With the recent loss of school funding due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this renewal will be critical for our organization. On behalf of the Maslin City Schools, I ask you to exercise your civic duty on Election Day, Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. Thank you, and go Tigers! Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of The Nate Moore Show. Our show is brought to you each week by Reliable Heating and Cooling here in Maslin. I'm your host once again, Dave Sheets, and joining me is the head coach of the Maslin Tigers, Nate Moore. Coach, welcome once again to the show. Thanks for having me on. Well, Coach, after earning a bye in the first round of the OHSA Division II playoffs, your Tigers crushed Walnut Ridge last Friday night, 56 to nothing, and on a night when a lot of things went very well, what, what pleased you the most? And we came out and played hard and played with great effort. And uh, the defense, again, was outstanding, uh, holding the Scots to just 56 yards of total offense and forcing five turnovers. Going into the game, how did you feel about the matchup your defense had against the Walnut Ridge offense? I'd say we felt pretty good. Um, and the kids, you know, the kids responded and played a great game. Your defense also uh, scored a touchdown on a fumble return in the second quarter. Uh, can you kind of tell us more about that play? Uh, I, th I think it was an attempted reverse play, and um, one of our kids was right there at the at the point where they were trying to pass off the reverse and made for a tough handoff, and the kid ended up having to just flip it out there, and um, the ball didn't make it there, and T.J. Williams picked it up and ran it in for six. Now, your offense also started fast with two long touchdown passes early in the game, uh, one to Jaden Ballard, the other to Andrew wilson Lamp. Uh, could you please uh, break down those two plays for us? Well, um, the, both of them were really the, the same play out of uh, different, slightly different personnel groupings. But, um, um, you know, they're, they're both wide cross. Um, and one of them, we had a, just a go route tagged on the back side. And quarterback liked that matchup and took a shot. And that was a touchdown to Jaden. And, mm -hmm. Uh, second one was, was wide cross also, but we had a post tagged on the backside and 
um, you know, similar the, the quarterback liked his liked his uh, uh, the post on the back side against man coverage and did a nice job st stepping up in the pocket, delivered a good ball, and uh, that was the touchdown to Andrew. Um, your offense also had a big night from uh, Camden Beasley, 108 yards rushing, 15 carries, and a touchdown. Uh, talk about his effort. Yeah, I mean, he's a kid that, that we think a lot of. Um, thought he was going to be really good coming into this year, and um, you know was was really getting there, um, and then, then had an injury and missed a couple weeks, and so we're just now getting him back. And um, he had a really good day, ran hard. Um, yeah, he's a big physical back and has some speed too. So we, we think a lot of Cam. I think he's going to be really good. And I know, of course, uh, you're, you're missing Raquan Venson, but you, you really do have some, some good depth there. Can you, can you kind of talk about that? Because other guys got some serious minutes as well. Yeah, you know, we've got Will Trell Hartson, who, you know, had the big game against McKinley, and, and you know, he played well also. And mm -hmm. uh, Jamatius Portis is, is a kid that uh, gets some carries for us. And then, you know, Nick Liebler answered the bell against McKinley when we had a bunch of guys out. So, um, you know, we're pretty talented at running back and feel good about a lot of those guys. And on special teams, uh, Alex Bauer, another six for six on extra point attempts. Uh, you know, it's easy to take his work for granted, I guess, sometimes because he's so consistent. But uh, how about you tell us more, a little more about Alex along with your holder and your long snapper? That, that's, a, that's a key group. Yeah, we definitely don't take Alex for granted. Um, you know, my first year, we, we really struggled. Mm -hmm finding a kicker and, and being able to kick even an extra point. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we, we definitely don't take him for granted. Every one of those kicks is, is huge. And, you know, he's been doing it for a long time for us. And, you know, great kid, great, um, great character. You know, he's a 4.0 student. I think he's got the highest or one of the highest GPAs on the, on the team. So that's a kid that does a lot of things right. All right, we'll meet a Tiger player in just a moment, but first this word from Reliable Heating and Cooling. There was a time when 10 miles to the gallon was acceptable. Today's 40 plus mile per gallon cars weren't even in the rear view mirror back then. Of course, this Linux air conditioner wasn't on the radar either. It's solar ready, the quietest, most energy efficient air conditioner you can own. It's time to live in the now. Call Reliable Heating and Cooling for the most advanced technology in heating and air conditioning. When you're ready to live in the now, Call Reliable Heating and Cooling. Lennox, innovation never felt so good. And thanks to Reliable Heating and Cooling, joining me now is senior co-captain Andrew Wilson-Lamp. And uh, Andrew, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. You bet. Hey, first of all, congratulations on a great win over Walnut Ridge. Uh, how about you tell us more about the play in the first quarter where you caught a 32-yard touchdown pass, put the Tigers up 14-0. Um... Jay Wise had a, a nice play on the ball before that, beforehand. Uh, he got an interception that put us a uh, decent field position. Um, Coach, uh, Coach Miller just called out the play, and he looked at me and said, go win, and that's what I did. Excellent. Now, the defense, which you're obviously a big part of as well, uh, held Walnut Ridge to just 54 total yards on offense. Uh, how were you guys able to slow them down as a unit? Um, Coach McConnell always stresses to us about doing our job, and uh, I think we went out there and just made sure we focused on our specific jobs, each of us, and uh, we did a pretty good job holding them. Now, the week before, you had a bye uh, mm -hmm. in the playoffs, and uh, because of no game that week, um, how did your coaches use the practice time? Um, we used it as recovery, but we also weren't just sitting around uh, – we got to run scout team for the younger guys, got the young guys prepared for their game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and even though your team jumped out to a big lead early in the game against uh, Walnut Ridge, how did you and your teammates stay focused and stay motivated? Um, I mean, it wasn't necessarily – we just want to beat them. We want to beat every team that we play. We want to beat them by a lot of points. All right. So. Excellent. Now, as a defensive back, uh, tell us about the Hoover offense. I know they have a very good quarterback, a couple of wide, wide receivers, a good running back. Uh, uh, what, what are you most concerned with when you look at their offense? Um, I'm, mostly, I'm just concerned about that QB. You know, he's a really good player. Um, I have a lot of faith in myself and also Martavian and the two other DBs that we have, TJ and Jaden, to cover their receivers. So I think if we do our job, will be just fine. And then on offense, from a wide receiver viewpoint, uh, 
tell us a little bit about their secondary coverage uh, on Hoover's defense. Um, we don't see a lot of man. You know, we may, you know, they may switch up on us, but uh, I think that me, Jaden, and Martavian, Eric, all the receivers that we have can get by them and uh, score some touchdowns. Right. Maybe we'll see some more fireworks, right? Yes, sir. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you. Andrew Wilson Lamp joining us here on the Nate Moore Show. When we return, Coach Moore will be right back with us, and we'll take a look at the game against Hoover after this timeout. Three months ago, there weren't enough masks. We were desperately sourcing from all over the world. People were making face coverings from scarves, bandanas, and bits of fabric. Now there are plenty of masks, but some people don't want to wear them. Come on. Mask up, America. And welcome back to the Nate Moore Show. And special thanks to Andrew Wilson Lamb for joining us. And uh, Coach, uh, you know, we talked about earlier Andrew's big uh, touchdown catch uh, the other night. But uh, how would you assess his overall performance in the Walnut Ridge game? I had a fantastic game. Um, you know, he's been a shutdown corner for us all year, and he continues to play at a really high level back there. And um, you know, he's a he's a equally dangerous receiver. Um, so doing a great job. This Friday night, the Tigers take on North Canton Hoover at uh, Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in the third round of the Division II playoffs. Uh, Masson and Hoover do have some history when it comes to meeting in the playoffs. Uh, what more can you tell us about that? Uh, well, we've played five games all time, all, all of those games in the playoffs. Um, never had a regular, regular season scheduled game with Hoover. Um, the Tigers are 4-1. and one. Uh, the first game was played in 2001, I believe. It was a Tiger win, and the last one was in 2009, which was also a Tiger win. All right. I know Hoover features a three-year starter quarterback, a young man by the name of Connor Ashby. Um, what can you tell us about Ashby and about the rest of their offense? He's a fantastic quarterback, without a doubt, the best quarterback that we've seen all year. Um, throws the ball well, very athletic, um, so runs well, too. Um, very savvy. Um, you know, you, you can tell he's, he's a really experienced quarterback, very comfortable in the pocket and very comfortable on, on, on the edge if he's flushed. So um, does a fantastic job. And they've got some other good players. Uh, the running back, I think, is pretty good. Left tackle, I think, is really good. So, um, you know, they've scored a lot of points on a lot of people. So we, we've got our hands full. How about uh, defensively? Uh, what will they show you uh, formation-wise? And have you... Uh uh, seen some guys stand out on film? They've settled into mostly a 4-3 defense, um, multiple coverages, uh, some cover three, some cover one, some cover two, some cover four. Mm -hmm. um, don't blitz a lot, but, uh, you know, they'll, they'll blitz sometimes. Um, safeties are good, good players. You know, I think number eight's pretty good. And um, uh, number 79, defensive tackle, I, I think he's a good player too. Excellent. Well, Coach, best of luck on Friday. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Coach Moore and uh, Tiger co-captain Andrew Wilson-Lamp for joining us on the show this week. This edition of the Nate Moore Show brought to you by Reliable Heating and Cooling. I'm Dave Sheets. Thanks for watching. And as always, go Tigers. Even though there's so much against us, you will see me choose to protect myself and my community from the coronavirus by wearing a face cover. And even with my face covered, you will see me making music and bringing light to all no matter the time. Join me in wearing a face covering to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. Because covering your face is one small act of kindness that has the power to bring us together. Maslin City Schools is proud to have one of the top career technical education programs in the state of Ohio, recently receiving a number one ranking of the 93 districts in the area of achievement. Our career technical education department offers 14 pathways preparing students for college and careers. All students have the opportunity to participate and compete in their career technical student organization, as well as obtain valuable experience in the field while earning aligned industry credentials and or college credit in high school. Visit MaslinSchools.org for more information.
Welcome back to another edition of Swing, featuring Tiger Swing Band Director Jason Neal. We're on the air with you every Wednesday night following the Nate Moore Show. Our show is brought to you each week by Howard's Tiger Rags in downtown Maslin. I'm your host, Maya Woods, and here with me is Mr. Neal. Welcome to the show, Mr. Neal. Thanks for having me, Maya. Last Friday night, the weather was great, and so were our Tigers in that big playoff win over in Walnut Ridge. How did the band's halftime performance go? Well, you know, we did our heavy metal rock show again, and uh, I thought the kids did a great job with it. Um, I thought it was even better than week three uh, when we first debuted that show, uh, which takes a lot of work uh, to kind of resurrect a show once you've learned other new shows. So um, I was real proud of the kids and their performance. Your band has done so many great halftime shows over the years. Can you tell us about some of the most challenging ones you've attempted, and how did they turn out? That is a great question. Um, right now I'm thinking back to some shows we've done over the years. Uh, I think two years ago we did our circus show for the McKinley, McKinley game and um, it was very challenging because we had a lot of animation in that show. We had um, like a tightrope walker uh, at the circus and a juggler um, doing some some uh, animation on the field and, and, and then that took a lot but I think that turned out really well. Um, I think back to our Disney show, one of my favorites that we've ever done. Uh, one of the big challenges there was getting everybody in costume and getting all the right songs to match the right costumes and things like that. Um, we did a Star Wars show, I think about 2013, somewhere around in there, uh, where we had a lot of animation and we, we used music from all of the Star Wars episodes at that time. and. Uh, um, so yeah, we've done a lot of shows over, over my 15 years now here in Maslin. You know, if you're doing a new show, every home game, and you add that all up, there have been a lot of shows. But I think the most challenging ones are the ones that have, uh, have the logistics in them where everything's got to be timed perfectly. I'm thinking about like our game show where we did last year. Uh, I'm thinking about our story time show where we had all these moving parts within the show where Obi was, was we were telling a story about Obi and and then anytime we have a lot of animation on the field those are those are probably the more challenging shows to get together and I didn't even mention the challenge of the music oh so um, you know some songs are more difficult to play than others so um, you got to factor in all those things when you when you talk about challenging shows oh. so from concept to completion What's the average amount of time it takes to put together a halftime show? Um, that's another good question because really we're trying to work our concepts in the spring so that by the time we get to the summer and fall, um, you know, we have to pick the music, we have to write the routines, which takes a long time. Um, I think for a page of drill or a formations, if you would, probably takes me about an hour to come up with uh, one page and you know the show will be you know anywhere from 15 to 30 pages of drill for the entire show so wow. it's a lot of hours just on me to design the routines and, and formations but then the kids actually they learn the formations actually rather quickly because our leaders are very good at placing students on the field where they're supposed to go so they read our drill charts and um, and then it's a matter of repeating those r routines to where the kids memorize them. So to answer your question, I would say it probably takes about a month per show oh. when you factor in all those things. And so doing six, seven a year takes quite a bit of time. And now we overlap some of that time where we're learning things at, you know, at the same time we're learning this show as we're learning this show. So some of those months overlap, but, um, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than you might think, so thanks for asking that question. Yeah. Uh, so how much t input and or suggestions do you get from band members in regard to creating your halftime show? Um, I would say every year we probably have uh, at least one show that came from an idea that a student had, um, if not more. 
But I always love to get input from other people, especially the students, but other staff members or anybody really. Um, like I said, if you know, 15 years and all those different shows were trying to be creative and do new things. Uh, it's a lot for for anybody to come up with all those ideas. So the more people that can be involved in the creative process, the better, in my opinion. So we do always have a uh, a brainstorming session in the spring, where we invite students to come and bring their ideas, and 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 we get. Uh, themes and, and song ideas from them. This past spring we did that digitally. We had a uh, you know Google Hangout where, oh. <laughs> where kids were all on their computers and we were talking about these shows together and um, I think uh, you know I think uh, maybe some of the, the heavy metal stuff came out of that and the Muppet theme idea was from that meeting. Huh. Um, so and then our senior show obviously this year we we gave them input into what songs we did uh, obviously, they chose some of their favorites, so hopefully to answer your question, there's a lot of input from other people. All right. Well, we'll have more with Mr. Neal here on Swing, but first, a word from Howard's Tiger Rags. Howard's Tiger Rags in downtown Maslin has the best selection of tiger apparel in the area. And once again, Howard's Tiger Rags is the proud sponsor of the Swing TV show on WHS-TV. Be sure to check out their large selection of infant and toddler apparel. You can even dress up your favorite pet in tiger gear. See their large selection of memorabilia along with mugs and glasses and your favorite tiger jewelry. How about a license plate holder or a tiger hat? Howard's is one to fit your style. Stop in at Howard's Tiger Rags in downtown Maslin and don't forget to like them on Facebook. Thank you, Howard's Tiger Rags, and welcome back to Swing. Can you tell us about any upcoming fundraising events that the band will be involved in? Well, right now we are doing our annual fruit and nut sale. Um, but that looks a little bit differently this year. Uh, everything is online and all of the uh, product will be delivered right to the customer. So um, our band students are uh, hopefully advertising and letting people know where to go to get to those online sites. Um, I'm assuming you can get to that through a link through our tigerswingband.com website. And um, so that's going on now through the end of November. So we have a lot of people who, who like to support the band and buy the fruit and nuts. Um, so if you're watching, go out and uh, check that out. Our fruit and nut sale is going on through the end of November. All right. Now, I understand that your OB mascot makes personal appearances. What types of events would OB be available for, and how would someone go about scheduling an appearance? Well, that's, um, that's a good question, too. I would say... Um, you know, Grace Musi is our OB this year. She's done a great job uh, for us as the mascot. Um, people who have had OB come to, let's say, like a birthday party or a, a charity event, uh, things like that, have always contacted the band and uh, typically have made a donation to the band. So um, we're not just sending OB all around everywhere to anyone who wants something or she would never do anything else. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so if anyone's ever interested in that, they've, they've typically contacted me or you know, any of the, the band staff and um, people have usually made a donation to help the band in a way that the mascot can come and uh, kind of, I guess, pick and choose which events are, are, you know, they're able to do, you know, and it's really up to the student's schedule. Is this a, a possibility to, to get Obi to be there? And um, so it never hurts to ask. Sometimes we have to say no, and sometimes we're able to say yes. But, uh, yeah, good question. As we approach November, what type of weather protection do your band members have available for both themselves and their instruments? Well, I think the protection for the instrument is really about rain at this point. So if we, if we have rain, you know, we want to keep instruments in cases, woodwinds specifically. I know we didn't do that the first game. But that was a, a whole different story. We weren't sure if we were going to have game two. So, <laughs> um, yes, we want to protect the instruments. But once they get cold, they start to freeze up, and there's really no protection that you can do once it's you know once you get to freezing temperatures outside. Um, but as far as the individuals, we encourage them to wear many layers under their uniform. Um, and then once we get into you know where we're down in the 40s and 30s in temperatures. 
uh, we will actually march in our parka uniform so that the students can wear even more warm clothes under, under that jacket and be much warmer than they would in our regular uniforms. So that's kind of our plan moving forward and, and even more so this year because it's tougher to get in and out of our regular uniforms because of all of our regulations and limitations. So we can't have everybody changing in and out of uniform at the same time like in years past. So hmm. just getting into and out of uniforms takes a lot longer. So once we get into the uh, winter weather and we're just wearing the parka, it's gonna be much quicker because they'll be uh, bringing most of that uniform themselves, whatever they've chosen to layer with. Hmm. And finally, Please give us the details about this week's halftime show as our tires take on North Canton Hoover. Well, that's another great question because uh, right now, as we sit here recording this, I don't know what show we're doing on Friday. We have a couple options, which is nice when you're repeating shows. Our, our hope is to do our flight show again, which would be our swing show, where we had uh, Come Fly With Me, fly, we, fly Me to the Moon, and Flip Flop and Fly, and we haven't done that since week two. Um, if our weather's not great leading up to the game and we have to repeat, let's say our heavy metal rock show would be our, um, our second option, uh, which we just did last week. The only reason we would do that is if we don't have enough rehearsal time to get the flight show polished and cleaned up, ready to go for performance by Friday. So we'll either be doing our swing show or our rock show again. All right. Well, tonight's show will be the final show for the 2020 season. Mr. Neal, thank you so much for joining us once again. Swing has been brought to you all season long by Howard's Tiger Rags in downtown Maslin. I'm your host, Maya Woods. Thanks for watching, and as always, go Tigers. Bye, sweetie. I love you. Bye, Mommy. I love you. No matter where life takes you, MCTV helps make sure you're never far from home. Hi. Are you being good for Daddy? Yes. Can we read a bedtime story? MCTV connects you to home because that's what matters most. Good night. Sweet dreams. MCTV. We go the extra smile. I joined cosmetology because I've always loved coloring hair and different colors and makeup. I joined media because I've always had a passion for all things related to media. I've always had a passion for teaching other people, especially topics that I'm interested in. I want to pursue a career as an orthopedic surgeon. And so when I saw that we had this class, I immediately circled it on my schedule and was excited to join. This has made me better because it made me very responsible. I like the relationships that I've developed in this class. 
the girls that are in here with me. I've really grown close with all of them. I joined this class because I enjoy helping others and I want to make a difference. Even like just making something and having people go, wow, that's really interesting. It means the world. It was just a really good environment to be in. It was real hands-on and it was just something I really wanted to do. I joined the construction trades to gain experience in the job I want in the future. Everything that this class has taught me will account for my career in the future. Before I came to this class, I was unemployed and Ms. Markley helped me get a job. I'm going to use what I learned in manufacturing in order to better decide my career. It gave me more knowledge on cars and gave me plans to go in the auto industry. Maslin CTE works for me. 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 Works for me. For me. For me. For me. Maslin CTE works for me. For me.